Okay, so sorry. So yeah, sexist marriage where I started. I turned to the internet to um, buy sex toys. And probably much like you all, like Sharma, I have like quite high standards of my shopping and how I dress and how I have my home. I just found there was nothing out there for me to buy, nothing at all. So um, having an experience in retail, I decided to do it for myself. So my vision was kind of the net a of of sex toys. So we literally stripped it right back, went through a design process, of what I wanted, the toys I wanted, how I wanted them to look. So we wanted to create something that was changing the industry but without breaking molds. So we decided to design a line of products, a small line of products, that would tick all the boxes for anybody that wanted to use them. Couples, men, women. Our focus was women and couples, not so much the men. Um, so what we did, we also then decided to create a brand that would educate and enrich others on how to use our toys. So we weren't just a sex toy company that would just be like, buy our toys, see you later. We wanted to create like a blog, Instagram, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you could come to us and be like, my boyfriend doesn't make me orgasm, how can I change it? Or your boyfriend could come to us and be like, I want to buy something for my wife on Valentine's Day, she's just had a baby, and I wanted there to be another, a real life person who's got knowledge at the other end of our company. And surprisingly enough, that has really transferred. And 63% of our customers are men, which I never expected when I was starting this. So that's something I wanted to touch on as well, is you've got to be constantly evolving as a business, which is what we try, we try to do. So that's how I kind of like started Perlesque. Then I wanted to like harness my passion for wanting to create something different, which I really threw into my branding. So I don't know where you guys go and have a look at my branding after this. It's strong throughout, right from our boxes, to the color of our toys, to our insignia, to our Instagram. Everything is in brand colors, brand font, everything. It's always on point. That's something that I was really, really, really like had to do. Same as Sharma with WA, like our pearlesque brand is strong throughout. Um, and I think it's a true reflection of me and what I wanted to create. Um, so yeah, I harnessed everything I knew about branding. I also read this amazing book, which you'll hear about shortly. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to do. The other thing for me with Perlesque was I wanted to create like a Perlesque identity. So if you were a Perlesque girl, you kind of re associated yourself with it very strongly. And I wanted you to be able to talk to people about it. So you could Instagram our post, our, your sex toys, like, and it, not be ashamed of it. Do you know what I mean? So like, you could be like... I've got a sex toy, I don't care. I'm proud of the fact that I'm sexual and liberated and free in that, that respect. When we were doing our research for Perless, we found that all, bar one, which you probably all know, Ann Summers, um, all of the sex toy companies were founded by men. Love Honey was founded by an investment banker. What does he know about the clitoris? Come on, tell me seriously. <laughs> so I was just like, like, come on, someone needs to do this better. Obviously, Ann Summers has done it really, really well. And her brand is amazing, her business model is amazing, and she works incredibly hard and is an inspiration to me. But it's a very different demographic for me. You know, I wanted to create something with, you know, the girl that goes to Harvey Nicks to have lunch, but also the girl who, you know, doesn't have 160 pounds to spend on a sex toy. Our price point is very reasonable, and it's similar to Ann Summers. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to create as well, was something that was, you know, aspirational, but you could actually afford it, so you could feel like you could buy something that was really special, um, and, you know, you haven't parted with a load of money. If you've never used a sex toy before, you're not going to go and spend £150 on it, because you don't know whether you're going to like it, whether it's going to work for you, and it's, to be honest, it doesn't work for everybody. And the orgasm is very personal, so you might try something, be like, that one doesn't work for me, but I want to try that one, which is kind of the idea of we've got nine products, we kept our collection very small. Um, we've got nine products, and um, they all do different things. We've got a couple that are made differently, out of different materials, but they're similar in shape, because some people like silicon, some people like ABS plastic, and again, it's so personal. So you can't please everybody in my industry, but you can certainly try.